Anybody home? Come on out, everybody! Time to play! Hello? Or not. Eleven deranged films that evil dead lovers will surely love. When the director and writer Sam Raimi raised funds along with the producer Rob Tapert for the first Evil Dead movie, little did he know the legacy that he was about to create. The full-blown horror spectacle in the middle of the woods struck the right chords with the audiences, and over the years, it has resulted in two sequels by Sam Raimi himself in a TV series titled Ash vs. the Evil Dead. Maybe it was the innovative plotline, or it was the clever casting of Bruce Campbell in a pivotal role, but viewers love the film and the ones to follow. The loyalty of the fans through all these years has made the concept popular, and many filmmakers have tried out similar ideas in their works. In this video, we have clubbed together some of these movies that we feel will be appreciated by the fans of Evil Dead. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Primal 2010 a group of friends join a journey to research an ancient cave painting in the Australian wilderness. Their vacation mood is short-lived when one of their friends falls victim to a strange sickness that makes her regress into a deadly predatory state. She starts hunting down the other members of the group, and now everyone is in a strange dilemma. They can either kill off their affected friends or be killed by them. Will there be any survivors in this mayhem? The so-called slasher flicks haven't earned a good reputation when it comes to the content. It's usually the same old story of a group of hapless teenagers struggling to battle a terrible monster, and the audience has grown tired of these movies. However, Primal drives away from such cliches and delivers an enjoyable narrative that gets you interested right from the opening scene that gives a glimpse of the evil that's about to be unleashed. Evil Dead fans will immediately identify with a similar theme involving a group of friends. The gore hounds won't be disappointed because there are some scenes that are seriously graphic in nature. From cannibalism to ripping flesh, there are moments that will make you squirm. The acting isn't terrible, and for a B-movie, the work with special effects is acceptable. The seven-foot cave-dwelling slug is unique, and while the movie wasn't going to win any awards, it certainly is an entertaining affair. Bornless Ones, 2017. Zack suffers from cerebral palsy, and to provide better care for him, his sister Emily moves into a remote house that's near an institution. She's accompanied by her husband and a couple of friends, and they soon notice something strange about the house. In various places in the house, strange symbols seem to hint at a terrifying secret. When Zack begins to heal miraculously, things are not as rosy as they seem. Possession by evil spirits makes it a horrifying night for them that is almost impossible to survive. There are two ways to look at this movie. You can either view it as an homage to the classic or a blatant knockoff. The reanimated corpses, demonic voices, the cabin in the middle of the forest, and many other things will remind you of the evil dead. While it is certainly no match for the source material, it does have a decent storyline. We were also impressed by the practical special effects that were used to present the gory bits. The haunting in the cabin and the possession thereafter have some spine-chilling moments, and when voices echo from deep in the house, you're bound to feel jittery. The acting performances are a bit lacking, and despite their best efforts, some of the scenes fall short of expectations. The ending, too, is somewhat unsatisfactory, and you might be left asking for more. It can still be a fun watch for the hardcore fans of Evil Dead, 
and is a decent attempt from the makers. Tales from the Crypt, Demon Knight, 1995. In a crazy fight between good and evil, Frank Breaker holds the key to an ancient secret that can unleash extreme evil and destroy everything. The Collector is a demon who's keen to retrieve the key and start off the apocalypse. After evading him and his armies of ghouls for a long time, Frank finally prepares to face him with the support of some gritty residents of New Mexico. Can they prevent the Collector and his forces from seizing the key? It is an uphill battle to be in the director's seat for a film that even remotely resembles Evil Dead. Ernest Dickerson, however, does a great job at combining horror, drama, and comedy to serve a complete package. There are some well-known faces in the cast, and the likes of Billy Zane and William Sadler do not disappoint. Billy Zane in particular is mesmerizing as the demon. With plenty of gore on offer, the fans of raw action are in for a treat. The creature effects look pretty cool, and you gotta watch out for the scene where the girl's face starts to transform. The atmospheric narrative is engaging, and the brilliant work with the sets makes things interesting. It doesn't have the same manic heights that were reached by the Evil Dead films, but the adventurous ride will bring back memories of Sam Raimi's work. The gruesome ending will appeal to the horror fan in you, and this underrated gem is surely worth your time. Dennis! Uh, using my authority as the current constable of the Willersville Township, I hereby pardon you of the false charge of witchcraft! Pipe to the head. Stand Against Evil, 2016. This horror comedy TV series tells the story of a grumpy and judgmental sheriff, Stan Miller. An outburst costs him his job, and he must make the handover to the new sheriff, Evie Barrett. Although they have their differences, they must work together when they uncover a crisis in the town. An ancient witch burning in the town may have some horrifying consequences that can only be averted by their brave alliance. Things get ugly when the demons come. You've probably guessed from the plot that the TV series is strongly inspired by Ash vs. the Evil Dead. While the similarities are obvious, this is a more jovial take on the storyline. The goofy low-budget productions add to the fun factor, and you'll soon find yourself loving the characters. The angry sarcasm of John C. McGinley as the loudmouth sheriff is just perfect and so is his partner in crime. The continually developing storyline makes way for some smashing episodes that bring you some grotesque monsters. The camera angles and makeup effects are clearly borrowed from Sam Raimi, and despite the campy effects, you'll enjoy this laugh riot. We wish the episodes were longer than the meager 20-minute ones that we got, and the action scenes could have been filmed better, other than that, this is a delightful combination of creepy and funny that will go down well with those who like Evil Dead movies. Hang back, Mark. I've got this. Mark! Father's Day, 2011. When Ahab was a young boy, his father was murdered by a sadist serial killer, Fuckman. Ahab becomes obsessed with getting his revenge on the murderer, but goes to jail for killing the wrong guy. Later, he's taken in by a priest named Father John Sullivan. Soon, they join hands with Twink, another guy whose father was killed, and together they set out in search of Fuckman. The murders continue, and they stick to their epic quest relentlessly. Will they succeed? Well, you have to watch Father's Day to find out. Troma Studios are well known for delivering some brutally entertaining movies, and this one is true to their line of filmmaking. Father's Day is not for the squeamish, and the disturbing scenes of male rape and nudity might not be everyone's cup of tea. It's actually more like a satire of exploitation horror movies, and is a terrific neo-grindhouse film. 
Even though it is a micro-budget flick, the smart direction makes it look ten times its budget. There are some commendable acting performances, and the quick cameo from Lloyd Kaufman is unmistakable. We love the makeup and gore effects that are a class apart from other movies in this league. If you don't get offended by the unapologetic narrative of this trauma classic, you are in for some vile fun ahead. Wither, 2012 If there's one thing you've learned from Evil Dead movies, it's to avoid desolate cabins in remote forests. In this movie, based on the story of Evil Dead, a young Swedish couple travels to an abandoned cabin in the woods to spend a fun vacation with their friends. However, the cabin houses the roots of evil that shelter some sinister secrets from Sweden's past. When these evil forces are unleashed, the fun holiday turns into a nightmare. The plot bears an uncanny resemblance to Evil Dead, but you would be disappointed if you expected the same level of thrill. In fact, the film will fail to scare you, and the lack of explanation about the house won't impress the critical viewers. This Swedish horror flick thrives on modern gore effects, and the zombies are well crafted. The chance to utilize the best of Swedish wilderness was missed, and the cinematography is not the best that you'll see. The only possible field where it manages to keep up with its predecessor is the impressive gore, but the poor acting is a bummer. A scene where one of the guys starts screaming after being possessed is almost a stab to the ear, and the most intense moments are lost due to the lack of acting skills. Watch this one only if you're a die-hard Evil Dead fan. Help! Help! <laughs> Ghost House, 1988 Some unexplained radio signals of people screaming are picked up by Paul, and he traces the location to a house. He travels with his girlfriend, and some other young intruders are also snooping around the house. They're all in for the shock of their lives because the house is haunted by its terrifying past. A man named Sam Baker lived there with his wife and young daughter. He worked as a funeral director and often stole belongings of the dead people. A clown doll taken from a dead kid was the source of horrifying evil, and the group of friends will struggle to make it out alive. It's not often that you'll come across a movie that manages to be cheesy and creepy at the same time. Ghost House is the best of both worlds, and although the story has shades of evil dead, they've added some extra twists to spice things up. The film starts off with a bang, and the sumptuous moments of gore right at the start is an indication of what's about to come. The acting is terrible, and we're being polite here. Some of the dialogue delivery is so bad that it comes off as hilarious. However, in the middle of all the campy stuff, the clown doll is eerie enough to give you a few sleepless nights. The spooky soundtrack adds to the atmosphere, and you'll enjoy this movie even with the bizarre ending. Witchery, 1988 A sudden storm leaves a group of people stranded on a remote Massachusetts island. An isolated hotel seems to be the only shelter in sight, but an evil witch haunts the place. She is the ghost of a former German actress and starts to possess the members of the group one by one. It is utter chaos, and as they're being mercilessly killed, there seems to be no way out. Will there be any survivors? To be honest, we've heard such stories too many times in horror flicks. Witchery is nothing out of the box, but some truly scary moments make it stand out in the crowd. Considering the time and the budget, the special effects won our hearts, and we looked through the glaring resemblance to the Evil Dead. Apart from the plot, some of the scenes are straight lifted from the Sam Raimi classic. 
the movie can be unrelenting and sometimes things get a bit too mean for comfort. The gore is plentiful and some inventive death scenes are a welcome addition to such films. David Hasselhoff does a decent job and Linda Blair is perfectly suited for the role. The scene where she is possessed is unintentionally hilarious. But you'll be left marveling at the unexpected twist in the end. At times, the pace slows down, but there's no lit up in the intensity of the narrative. Beyond Darkness, 1990 Moving into a new house can be a lot of fun, but not if the house is built on land where 20 witches were burnt at the stake. When a priest moves into this house with his family, he's tormented by the evil forces that are sheltered there. His young son is possessed by the evil spirits, and he seeks help from a far more experienced priest to perform an exorcism. It's revealed that the house is also home to the spirit of a crazy woman who killed 10 children and was sentenced to death. In short, it's too powerful and evil to contain. Besides Evil Dead, you'll find similarities with the likes of the Amityville Horror and The Exorcist. The director, Claudio Fragasso, previously worked on films like Troll 2. And he even gets the child actor from the movie to work in Beyond Darkness. Logic goes out the window on several occasions, but the engaging plot won't let you dwell on the flaws. Right from the opening scene, the movie makes a strong impact on the audience, and the acting provides great support to the coordinated direction. The creepy background score nails the theme, and the special effects were on point. You won't get the crazy moments of Troll 2 in this film, but you'll be reminded time and again about the inspiration from the Evil Dead. It's said that the movie is based on a true story that is even recognized by the Roman Church. Fuck you. The Horror Show, 1989. A ruthless serial killer is finally caught by detective Lucas McCarthy. While Lucas watches his execution, he notices something strange where his body burns physically in the electric chair before he dies. The serial killer made a deal with the devil, and now he's keen to have his revenge on the detective. The McCarthy family moves into a new house, but they're followed by the evil spirit of the killer. Thereafter begins the series of horrifying events where Lucas and his family must find a way to survive. This movie has more resemblance to Wes Craven's Shocker than Evil Dead, however, there are some scenes that clearly draw inspiration from the horror classic. The paranormal plot has some tense moments and plenty of jump scares to keep you on the edge of your seats. It is no masterpiece, but the brilliant screenplay makes it worth your time. The acting performances by Lance Henriksen and Brian James are top-notch, and they are the lifeline for this movie. Some clever shots make the scenes in the basement really creepy. And when Lucas's daughter's boyfriend is killed, you feel the tension as the blame falls on Lucas. As long as you don't mind the plentiful curse words in the dialogue or the gore, this is a must-watch slasher flick. House 2, The Second Story, 1986 Jesse moves into his old ancestral house along with his girlfriend and a couple of friends. It's the same house where his parents were mysteriously murdered many years ago, and there are still some ancient remains in the nooks and crannies. They are unaware that there is an ancient Aztec skull in the house, and a few reanimated corpses are desperately searching for the magical powers. The movie follows their comical struggle against the evil forces and their bonhomie with the good ones. This campy horror comedy is a fine specimen of Western horror, and while this is no Citizen Kane, it certainly is a lot of fun. The sheer unpredictability and madness in the plot are what makes it so fascinating. 
you'll soon find yourself connecting with the unique characters and laughing your lungs out at all the fun and frolic. It was obviously not intended to be scary, and while there is a similarity with Evil Dead in terms of the theme, it certainly isn't similar in the execution. The actors like Ari Gross and Jonathan Stark are just apt for their wacky roles, and the imaginative special effects, such as the skeletal horse, will remind you of Ray Harryhausen. The catter puppy was simply adorable, and we could watch the movie for that alone. If drinking with a zombie isn't cool, we don't know what is. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.